The terrifying adventure of the Starliner crew continues, leaving many curious about how it's going to end. However, contrary to public expectations, the ending will be just as risky as the earlier events. NASA has announced that two astronauts will still return on the Starliner. No dragon, no support here. So why has NASA made this decision, and how are the astronauts reacting? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Boeing Starliner spacecraft and its crew have been in space for over a month, much longer than the initially planned one week. However, the two astronauts piloting this historic test mission mostly praised the vehicle that took them to the International Space Station, marking the first crewed flight of the spacecraft manufactured by Boeing. In a short press briefing from the space station, Barry Butch Wilmore, a veteran of two previous space flights, said that we're absolutely confident in the return trip and that despite the issues on the way to the station, Starliner was truly impressive. Still, as he took over manual control of the autonomous spacecraft as it approached the station June 6th, he could tell that the thrust was degraded, he said. At the time, we didn't know why, obviously. The failures had just happened. You could tell it was degraded, but it was still impressive. Sunita Williams, who's on her third space flight, said she has a real good feeling in my heart that the spacecraft will bring us home no problem. But when that will happen is still unclear. Although they've undergone three review and problem-solving meetings as of the most recent meeting, July 10th, NASA and Boeing officials still do not have a satisfactory answer for the return date of the two astronauts currently on the ISS. Steve Stitch, who oversees NASA's commercial crew program, is optimistic that the Starliner will come back by the end of July. This is merely an estimated time frame, and it wouldn't be surprising if the return date for the two astronauts is further delayed. However, it is certain that NASA and Boeing will never abandon the Starliner and rely on another spacecraft to bring the two astronauts back to Earth. In a briefing late last month, he said that the crew members were not stuck in space and that there were no plans for any kind of rescue operation. I want to make it clear that Butch and Sunni aren't stranded in space, he said. Our plan is to continue to return them on Starliner and return them home at the right time. On Wednesday, he reiterated that the prime option today is to return Butch and Sunny on Starliner. Um, right now, we don't see any reason that um, that wouldn't be the case. Referring to SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, he added, We have two, two vehicles, two different systems that we could use to, to return crew and, and uh so, so we have a little bit more time to go through the data and then make, make a decision as to whether we need to do anything different. He added that there's been no discussion with sending another Dragon uh, to, to rescue the Starliner crew. To be honest, I know that astronauts are deliberately saying flattering words about Starliner to reassure the public. But I'm certain that deep down, each of them also has a little bit of fear. However, Starliner is under the management of major U.S. government agencies, which truly don't allow it to fail, and even those who sit on Starliner to return to Earth are not allowed to turn their backs on it. Therefore, NASA will certainly not use SpaceX's Crew Dragon, and as of now, Crew Dragon's not part of their plans. Despite the fact that Dragon's proven to be very reliable for crewed flights, NASA and Boeing can't afford to lose face, especially with all the other rival countries around the world like China and Russia, closely watching the flight of the top U.S. government agency. Hey, if you like this content, give us a like and subscribe. It'd be great motivation for us to keep making videos for you every day. All right, getting back into it. The question arises, after completing the first test flight of Starliner, can NASA abandon Boeing Starliner in the distant future? Although it's not what everyone wants to hear, the reality is that NASA's unlikely to eliminate Starliner. The reason lies in the interdependent relationship between NASA and its contractors similar to the relationship between military and defense suppliers. When a government agency like NASA relies on a few suppliers with exclusive expertise, they're forced to maintain the existence of these partners to ensure long-term competitiveness. NASA can't afford the risk of Boeing withdrawing from the space industry, although this possibility is low. Boeing's withdrawal would reduce the number of capable contractors, creating an almost monopolistic situation for the remaining companies like Lockheed Martin and SpaceX, which could drive up service prices. To maintain competition and control costs, the government needs to keep multiple competitors in the market, even if some don't meet the highest standards. This strategy creates a competitive market, though not perfect, but necessary to control prices and foster innovation. NASA clearly wants to have more options beyond SpaceX for spacecraft and launches, as a monopoly would give too much advantage to Elon's company. But if that freedom comes with the risks that Boeing's spacecraft undoubtedly seems to bring, is it really worth it? To me, it's not. But perhaps NASA and Boeing will eventually find a solution, and we'll see Starliner become the masterpiece that Boeing's always wanted. Only time will tell. 
and to address the issues that Starliner encountered during its first flight, such as problems with five thrusters and a helium leak in the propulsion system, NASA and Boeing are conducting experiments on the Starliner spacecraft as well as at ground test facilities. They've used thrusters identical to those on Starliner, replicating the firing rates performed on the way to the space station. Ideally, engineers want thrusters to reach the same high operating temps that lead to their performance degradation in orbit. After these test series are complete, engineers manually inspect the thrusters to see if the overheating caused any damage. What we've found in this flight is we have fired the thrusters uh, more than expected, and then I would say um, more frequently, said Steve Stitch. And when I say frequently, I, I'm talking about how close you fire an individual thr uh, thruster pulse to the to the next pulse of that thruster. What we're trying to do at White Sands is really replicating exactly what those pulses were that those thrusters saw, and then understand the heating effect from those pulses, and then make sure that there's no unintended consequences of the pulses, Stitch explained. They believe that if the thrusters overheat on the ground and engineers can demonstrate they're not damaged by the additional thermal stress, officials will have more confidence in the propulsion system's ability to control the spacecraft after departing the space station. Moreover, understanding the thruster performance is crucial for future Starliner flights, determining whether changes are needed in the control software settings or the activation frequency to avoid overheating. So the way that we fly the flight, do we want to change that a little bit? Are there limits that we want to set differently in our software on how to deselect the thrusters? Those are the types of things that we want to learn. Said Mark Nappi, Vice President and Program Manager of Boeing's Commercial Crew Program. The test series began July 3rd with a series of firings simulating what one Starliner thruster experiences in orbit. However, engineers couldn't replicate the same heat levels on the ground as the thrusters did in space. So the test got paused this week to find better ways to simulate the actual thermal conditions of the spacecraft. They hope to pick up testing this weekend and complete it by week's end. Starliner's maneuvering thrusters are housed in four thruster pods, known as doghouses, around the service module's perimeter. These doghouses function like thermos bottles, exacerbating the overheating problem with the thrusters. We get a great deal of thermal kickback from the doghouse itself. And so not all the heat is coming you know, directly from the thruster or through the, the injector of the thruster. Nappy said. So we're getting quite a bit of heat soak from the doghouse. So that's good information to have as we move forward and, and determine what the future mission profiles are going to look like. Engineers are also validating their estimates of the additional helium the spacecraft carried to pressurize its propulsion system after Starliner detached from the space station. Managers believe there's sufficient helium margin to handle the several hours of flight from detachment till Starliner discards its service module just before reentry. The service module burns up in the atmosphere, so Boeing won't recover it for a full diagnosis of the leakage and thruster issues. Starliner's reusable crew module will parachute to one of several potential landing sites in the western U.S. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.